Okay, we're back. We're live. I'm Jay Fidel. This is uh, 4 o'clock rock on a Tuesday. We are pleased and delighted and happy and ecstatic to have with us Senator Russell Ruderman and Senator Laura Thielen, both of the state Senate, and um, who are um, both collaborating on a couple of very important issues and bills. Here on Community Matters, which we play here on a Tuesday afternoon, we're talking about voter initiative, SB 2754, and the uh, term limits bill, SB 2753. Welcome to the show, Senators. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Great to have you. You know, ThinkTech really likes to get into what's happening in the legislature. We like to get into the creative things, the, may I say, disruptive things that you know, change our lives, change our system, take us ahead, you know, expand, make more transparent, make our government vital and alive and vibrant and all those things. And you guys are right in the middle of that. I'm so happy that you did that and that you're here. So we'll talk first about the voter uh, uh, initiative bill, which so many other states have. That's SB 2754. You guys collaborated on putting that together. Um, will somebody tell me exactly why? Well, uh, Senator Thielen and I went to a legislative conference uh, a couple of months ago. It was called Western Leadership Academy, where a couple of legislators from each state are invited, and all the Western states are there. And you know, it stimulated a lot of discussion and thinking. And uh, one of the things that occurred to us is that Hawaii is sort of an outlier among Western states in these two areas and that we never had a, any form of direct voter initiative or any form of, ter of term limits for our state legislature. And upon realizing that you know we're, it, it's not typical, we got to thinking about it and talking about it and decided we would propose both of those things. Um, that, that's where the idea came from. I think after Russell and I came back from the, the meeting, we were talking about this and it took us a while to put two and two together but one of the challenges Hawaii faces is when it comes to state decisions. Uh, since the 1978 Constitutional Convention, there has been no way for a voter or citizen to bring forward an idea um, to voters at the state level. And so what do people do? What is the remedy in cases where the legislature doesn't make a decision? Because frequently, we'll make decisions that people don't like. But what happens when there is just an absence of action? And the best example I can give is the important agricultural lands. The state, um, in 1978, asked the legislature to identify and protect important agricultural lands so we could have permanent agriculture in our future. And we've never done it. And it's been nearly 40 years. And there's no remedy. So we came forward with the idea of initiative to address um, opportunities for voters to bring uh, new laws back to other voters in cases where the legislatures refuse to act. Yeah, and that, that, that makes, um, it, it makes the legislature more accountable. It, make, it brings the public into the legislature. Tra it's more than transparency, it's participation by, by the people. But you know, I, I think what I hear you saying is that, is that there's a kind of pressure building up since the 1978 Constitutional Convention where people haven't had a chance to express themselves, not with you know, a, a, a tangible legal result. <clears throat> they can go and protest all they want, but that doesn't result in a change of the law, not directly anyway. And so I'm wondering, would your view of it be different if we had had constitutional conventions over the past uh, 40 years? You know, it's possible. Um, but I, I do want to be clear, we're not recommending that people be able to bring forward an amendment to the Constitution, because I think that is a, a very significant and serious change. And Hawaii doesn't, as you know, embrace change very quickly. <laughs> so we took a look at what are the lessons learned in the other states where they have initiative, and what kind of safeguards could we put into the bill so that we could start slowly and learn from the mistakes elsewhere. So in our bill, we said you, you can't bring forward a question to change the Constitution. You can't bring forward a question to change the budget. And you have to have a significant number of signatures of voters to assure that it's a, a question that enough people feel ought to be brought forward for a change in the law. Doesn't this need a constitutional amendment? Or can you do this simply by a statute? It does need a constitutional amendment. That's one of the, that's, for each of these uh, proposals, we would need a constitutional amendment to enable that. But that can happen with a simple ballot question. It doesn't need a constitutional convention. Uh, you know, and, and we have thought hard about the safeguards to, to 
make sure um, initiative doesn't go wrong. A couple of other things that I think we would propose is that there's no paid signature gathering so that, you know, some big company can't get it, come in here and just hire its way through the process. And also that the legislature can overturn an initiative with a supermajority, you know, in, in future years. What would that be, three quarters? Two uh, thirds? Two thirds is thirds. what we're proposing. And as Laura has said, we're not wedded to any specific aspect of this idea. We want to open up the discussion. We want to we want to find a way to have our democracy work better in Hawaii, and if there's some adjustments, well, you know, we don't, we're not claiming to have the perfect solution. We want to get the discussion started. Yeah, start the conversation. Yeah. I, th I think people, voters around the nation, are frustrated sometimes by inaction. And as you mentioned, if there had been constitutional conventions, there may have been ways that people could have brought things forward for consideration. Um, but sometimes you also just need to change a law. And so there's a lot of frustration about um, campaign finance, about ethics, about sunshine law, the, where the legislature has exempted itself from certain laws that we apply to you know, the county councils, to other public bodies, but not ourselves. And the public you know, wants to have an opportunity to bring these measures forward and to say, let us vote on them, because some cases we've failed to act. We failed to act on what you know is a, a strong popular demand. Boy, I can see that a lot of people would like to see this pass because they have, they have changes they want to make. Mm -hmm. uh, but let's talk about the mechanics. Uh, first, the mechanics of how you pass it. So, in order to pass the initiative bill now pending in the legislature, as Senate Bill 2754, um, you have to get it through committees. And, um, and then you have to go to a floor vote. So what, what, what does that look like where we are now? I mean, is it, what committees would it go to? Has it been assigned? Will it be assigned? Uh, what kind of, a, uh, what do you expect will happen in these committee meetings? It's been assigned to the Senate Commissioner, uh, Committee, uh, Judiciary Committee and Ways and Means Committee. Um, it's a double referral, meaning it has to go to one committee and then the next. It has not met the deadline. So unless it is re-referred to a joint committee hearing, then it would be dead this year. If it passed, it could be re-referred and voted on by the full Senate, then it would have to pass the House, and then the question would go on the ballot for the next election for the general public to vote on to determine whether it wanted voter initiative. Well, that's, and that's one of the various tracks you use to make an amendment. Yes. The Constitution, this, voter initiative, yeah, that means voter on the ballot. Two ways to amend the Constitution in Hawaii. One is if the legislature allows a question to be put on the ballot, and the other is a constitutional convention. We've had no way for voters to be able to propose these ideas for nearly 40 years. Okay. And Jay, if I may, you know, uh, we, gave, we talked about an example regarding agricultural lands of what might, what, what, what initiative may come up that would help people. Yeah, yeah. Another one that I think may may be addressed if initiative were possible in our state, would be a significant raise in our minimum wage. For example, certain other um, municipalities that have very high cost of living like ours have, are on their way to a much higher minimum wage of 14 or $15 an hour. Here in Hawaii, we're, we are slowly going to get to $10 an hour in three more years. But we do have the highest cost of living of any state, and um, the income gap between our average wage and the average cost of living has resulted in huge problems that we see every day, homelessness and poverty, for example. And I can think of nothing that would lift more people out of poverty faster than raising our minimum wage very significantly. Yeah. I'm a business person. I have a bunch of employees, and I still think fair is fair. People who work deserve to get a living wage. Yeah. But I mean, it, it raises the possibility of so many other things, too. Mm -hmm. Uh, that people would like to have, but either the legislature has treated it before and 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 not done that for one political reason or not or another, um, or the legislature just doesn't want to touch it. Mm -hmm. um, and this would open a whole slew of possibilities. Things we've seen, things you see in the letters to the editor in the op-ed pieces, things you've seen in the editorial page. Uh, email, but now it could be a real possibility. Well, and again, the threshold, though, does require that in order to get a question on the ballot, you have to get the signatures of 10% of the people that voted in the past gubernatorial election. 
So you're talking, you know, tens of thousands of signatures. So you're not going to get something crazy on the ballot. Just for a rough and idea, how many people voted in the last election? I think we had two. We think 350,000, yeah. so 35,000 35, would be that yeah. That's not easy. No, it's so, not yeah. easy. And then you also would have to uh, run it by the attorney general to make sure the question is a legal question. It can't address an individual business or, you know, individual person. So again, these are safeguards that other states have put into place. That'd be a constitutional yeah. issue. I guess what you're really saying is the attorney general would would opine uh, on constitutionality mm -hmm. in general, and if it, and if he didn't check off on the bill, just under the initiative, right. uh, then it, it wouldn't fly, it wouldn't work, it wouldn't it wouldn't have a chance of becoming a law. Yes. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Um, and the, you mentioned a minute ago too that it could not affect uh, budget. And what was the other one that could not actually amend the Constitution? Right. Right. Yeah. Um, and that's it, though. Those are the only limits that I get at all. Well, it can't, it can't change the Constitution. There will be a referendum, not an initiative. It can't address a specific budget item, address a specific person or business. The Attorney General needs to assure that it's legal and it can be overturned by the legislature. I think those are the five safeguards that we've built in, again, uh, based on the experience of other states. Some states it works better than others, and we try to take the best from all of them. And the overturning by the legislature is um, five years after it passes, because in some cases, I mean, you don't want the legislature to go in and overturn something right after the voters have endorsed it. But in other states, they have found some years down the line that there were unintended consequences. So it's a safeguard. So you give it five years to breathe. Yeah. To, to see, to get reaction, to settle in, so to speak, yeah. find out what it's really about. Yeah. And again, we're we're open to alternative ideas, amendments, other okay. options. The, the 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 central idea we're trying to get at is in Hawaii, in cases where the legislature has failed to act, there's nothing that anybody can do. So this is a vehicle for people to be able to bring an idea forward mm -hmm. where it would have broad popular support yeah. to allow folks to vote on it. Yeah. Why do I feel that if the question of whether the initiative bill would pass were put to the public, it, it would be pass, overwhelming yeah. support for it. Am I right? Don't uh, you feel I, that? I, I would <laughs> think you're right. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Let's take a short break. Okay. Uh, Senator Russell Rudiman, Senator Laura Thielen. Um, here on Community Matters, talking about voter initiative and also term limits. We'll be right back. Aloha. My name is Josh Green. I'm a senator from the Big Island in the ER position. Every other Tuesday, I get to host a show here on the Think Tech program about health care. We call it Health Care in Hawaii. It's really enjoyable for me to bring other health care leaders from around the state to talk about our pressing issues. Hawaii has long been the health state, but we need to keep up the momentum the inertia, and with your help and with your participation, we can come and share all of the big issues that are pressing day to day. Thanks for joining us every Tuesday, alternating weeks from 2 to 2.45. Aloha, namaskar, and hello. My name is Anu Hitchell, and I host the show called Climate Change Beyond Outrage. We go beyond outrage to find solutions to climate problems facing people, nations, and the world. I hope you will join me here every Tuesday at 1 o'clock. We broadcast live from thinktechhawaii.com. Aloha and bye-bye. Uh, Senator Russell Ruderman and Senator Laura Thielen on voter initiative and the uh, term limits bill. You know, one thing that strikes me, you guys, is that, you know, this, that this should get through the legislature. This should be formally accepted <laughs> as participation and involvement of the community. And if it is not, and apparently it's going to have some trouble getting through, but if it is not, you know, what does that say? Why are we, why are we holding people back from participating? We should be inclusive, not exclusive. I mean, I know that's why you guys did it, but it, I think it reflects, uh, I don't know, my thinking, maybe yours too, it reflects a, an attitudinal problem that we need to address. Um, you know, I think that it's not a surprise that um, Russell and I sponsored these bills together. Both of us came into the legislature later in life, him much later. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But, you I know, think that's a compliment. But we both, <laughs> we both have had professions. You know, he started and runs a very successful business, which is a difficult thing to do in Hawaii. You know, he has a, a couple hundred employees. I worked as, a, as an attorney in the nonprofit sector, ran my own business for a while. I think we have faith 
and people outside the legislative process and being rational people, educated people, experienced people. Um, you know, it's, it's fine to put your trust in that. It's not that legislators alone have this mysterious, you know, all-knowing power about what's in the best interest of the state. Whereas a lot of uh, my fellow legislators, as wonderful as they are, as much as we have to learn from them from their experience, many of them have known nothing but the legislature. And so it gets to be kind of an insular place. Yeah. And of course, it's on human nature to not want to give up power that you have. Sure. But this is a democracy. And, and it is a representative democracy. So normally, it ought to work through our elected representatives. But the initiative process is sort of a safety valve or a pressure release valve when, when that other system is not working. And uh, as Laura, as someone asked us, well, don't you think things can go wrong with initiative? And I, I've heard you answer that, well, some things go wrong with the lack of initiative, too, you know? So, yeah, yeah and, and neither system is perfect, but perhaps a balance might be better than all one and all the other. Yeah. You know, but a thought about government in general, um, you know, I, I think people don't like government as much as they used to. That's I my, right. it's a gestalt feeling that I have. The federal government, for sure. I mean, people really don't like the federal government. I don't know why. They should, they should go and spend some time in the Army, do public service, national service. That would help them appreciate their connection with the federal government. Uh, and I think the state, state, state government, too, you know, everybody runs it down and then can complains, manku, 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 you know, but they don't participate. And I think, you know, you guys are on exactly the right track because you're asking for more participation. If people have the chance to participate, then they can bring their ideas and they can't just complain. They can actually participate in the solution. At the end of the day, they like government better and we really need to have that. Yeah. Otherwise, we're going to come apart. You know, it's interesting you raise that because when we were at this legislative training for the western states and all the states had initiative, most of them also have term limits, which in many cases came about because of initiative. And we found in talking with our, our classmates, the fellow legislators, most of them were in there for a two-term period. There was a real um, diversity. It wasn't like they were all young or all old, but a diversity of professions, ages, backgrounds that we don't see in our legislature. And I talked to a number of them and asked them you know, why they ran. And they said, well, because it's our obligation under term limits to participate and to take turns with the governance. And so I think there was much more of a um, kind of an, uh, an opportunity for multiple people to participate. And so then they continued to participate afterwards and also before. You know, Music, they would musical, musical offices, <clears throat> so to speak. But not musical offices in a bad sense, actually no. in a good sense. And, and this, to me, you know, you're, with your think tech, when you look at Hawaii, where is there room for young people to advance here? I mean, we get calcified in our leadership in governance, and there's no room. And so that some of that feeds into why people will take off and go to the mainland and we'll have the brain drain, is because Hawaii just tends to get very you know, protective, and we don't, we don't allow transition to happen. Yeah, from our experience here, that's exactly right. Yeah. Uh, you have millennials, and uh, you know, they're discouraged because they, they feel this glass ceiling. Uh, they can't really have an effect on things. Mm -hmm. And you say to them, why don't you run for office? Oh, that's too hard. You know, but if we made it easy for them to participate, be heard, heard from, come up with ideas. And, and I'm sorry, I'm being piggy here, but in <laughs> Hawaii, when you say people don't want to run for office and seat, a ton of people that's go in and run for right. office. There's a culture here that you don't want to challenge your elders. You need to respect them. But if we had term limits and seats were open on a regular basis, mm -hmm. I think you would find a lot of people very interested. A lot, not, not just you younger people. You guys would be hurt by it, wouldn't you? Most yeah. of you. Fine by uh, well, 16 years down the line, we would have to address whether it's time to, to move <laughs> up or move <laughs> out or take a term off and come back. I mean, it's not the end of the world. Um, and I, I think we're willing to take that camera. I mean, for me, whatever personal sacrifice one makes to have a better society is a good bargain. And I, I'm, I'm willing to live it a lifetime of being a state senator to have a legislature that works better and includes more that's, people. That's, uh, that's sacrif sacrificing, actually, Russell. Well, but I mean, our founding fathers kind of envisioned citizen legislators, not career politicians. People who take their turn at the wheel, so to speak, and then go back to the farm. In those days, it was the farm, you yeah. know. But I don't think anyone ever envisioned 
career politicians, uh, you know, with, with all the insulation from our society that comes with doing nothing but being a politician. Yeah, and the other thing is, if, if you can go on and on and on, then what you, you spend more time running for office. You run for office before you have to run for office, because you're always running for office mm -hmm. and all that. Right. If, you, if you knew that at a certain point it was over, and you had to get out at least for a while, uh, then you wouldn't spend all your time running for office. You couldn't. And you could also <laughs> be free to take actions that aren't based on your re-election prospects. Yes, yes, prospects. exactly. Yes. Yeah. And you're both like that. Good yeah. for you both, actually. Okay. <laughs> well, we did write the bill so that um, sitting legislators wouldn't take it personally because it isn't aimed at any of them. So again, to start the conversation, we said let's have term limits for the legislature. The legislatures pass them for the councils and for pretty much every board and commission. So and if they're mayors. a good idea for and the mayors, so if it's a good mm -hmm. idea for them, good idea for us. Yeah, okay. But why don't we start this down the line and make the terms long? Is it 12 years? Yeah, we propose 12 yeah. years and not starting for four years. Most states that have term limits have eight years. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to be as, yeah. you know, we're very much not targeting the so current how, sitting legislators. Uh, so the, right now, a state senator has four year terms. Four year terms. Mm -hmm. right. A state representative has two year terms. Correct. Would those, those numbers remain the same? How many terms could you serve before you had to step down? A total of 12 years in each chamber. So that's three for a senator. S that's mm -hmm. right. And for six. a representative, six. again, six. Yeah. 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 That's perfectly so again, reasonable. Yeah, reasonable I mean, reasonable time. 24 years in the legislature, I'd say if you're just coming yeah, in. Yeah. 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 That's a career, you know. Yeah. It, well, it's a semi career. It would be well, a career if it was twice that much, then a well. serious career. <laughs> it's a second career. Yeah. No, well, and, and I think both of us would be open to shorter terms, but again, you know, part of this is being able to get it through the legislature because we would have to vote on it at the legislature, and again, it would have to go on the ballot as an amendment to the Constitution where the people of Hawaii would have a chance to vote on it, and I bet they would vote yes on that one. So what happened to the bill? That's uh, Senate Bill 2753. What's the status of that one? Um, I've been told that the chair of that committee is going to give it a hearing. It has not been scheduled for a hearing as yet, but in this case it's not too late. So uh, I, I assume we're going to have a hearing announced for perhaps next week. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So <clears throat> got to get the word out so that those people who, members of the community who would vote for this at least come down and express themselves about how this would improve their civic engagement, you know. Well, we would like that, sure, you bet. We can uh, give you notice if there's a, a if hearing. You, if you do that, we will put it in our, uh, we call it the global, our uh, program and program advisory, which comes out every morning. We send it around to I know, I get that. 75, good. <laughs> Se we have to send it to you, too. Okay. 7,500 so people get that every uh, day. Nice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. very important that I think people know about this because I think, yeah. you know, it's like, this is the kind of thing that overarches other things because this can mean so much. Yes. This, can, this can cover so much ground. There are so many things we have to address. And, um, and we need a bit of a procedural shakeup, I think. So uh, what, are, what, are the, what, are, what are the people who would oppose the bill say? I mean, aside from, I'd like to stay in office, <laughs> you know, period. But you know who, who out there would would oppose it? What what influence would you know what what con constituents would come in and try to influence the legislature not to pass a bill like, or bills like this? Well, the the legitimate comment that I've heard on the other side of the story is, well, you'd be getting rid of the good legislators also, you know, about the same in power. Uh, for me, those who would oppose it would be those who desire consolidation of power, which would include lobbyists and largest corporations primarily because it's easier to have control over someone more and more with time in my opinion um, so I think the effect of it would be to, to you know spread power out uh, amongst the people and have less consolidation of that power so those who benefit from the consolidation of power is who I would assume would oppose it I <clears throat> what I think is interesting is we have these two measures uh, one for the citizen initiative and one for the term limits for legislators. And of the two, we've been told that there will be a hearing on the term limits. So what that says to me is that the initiative is a greater threat. 
term limits, especially the way we phrase the bill, it's not going to affect anybody it's, currently it's in Congress. It's one issue, right? It's one issue. It doesn't involve every issue you can think of. Right. But, but when you talk also about a threat to power, the, the term limits, the way we phrased it, is not a threat to anybody sitting in power because they'll be out of office by the time they come into effect. Mm -hmm. The initiative would allow voters to bring forward ideas on changing the law that the legislature has refused to act on. And I think that's a greater threat to people in power. Sure, I can see that. But let, let's take a look at the, the state in general and the way things set up and out there in the community, it's called the civic community. Um, can you tell me why there, not, there has not been a constitutional convention, not even close, since 1978? I mean, people, there are many people who campaign for it, but it doesn't really get close. What, what's been, what's, what's the, the, the process on that that's, that's not, not let us have a constitutional convention? Well, I think some of it is um, a lot of, again, the people who, they may not be happy with the decisions that are being made, but they have access. They, they have um, maybe greater input than the average citizen. Don't want to give that up. And so there's a fear of the unknown, that if we open the doors up to a constitutional convention, better the devil we know than the devil we don't know. Yeah. yeah. And, and access, I think, is a really important aspect of that, because when you have a constitutional convention, you, nobody, really it's access it's but, it's it's anything can go but you know in our last constitutional convention we had a lot of young leaders come forward and Isn't it wasn't true? it wasn't bedlam i mean it, it was a very thoughtful reasoned process where people gathered around the table did a tremendous amount of work and a whole bunch of great ideas came out of it and great people came out of it and maybe that's the kind of reinvigoration that hawaii needs that's a separate issue than the initiative that we're talking about, because the initiative in our bill, again, doesn't amend the Constitution, and it's just something where you would amend a law. But personally, you know, we haven't discussed this too much, but I, I would support another CONCON, because I, I think we need that vibrancy. We need that input of fresh ideas in Hawaii and an opportunity for new people to step forward. So you think we need both? I would support both. I would support both. You know, I wasn't here for the, I came in came along a few years after the CONCON. -Con. So uh, I think the reasons we haven't had one is the same things we've been talking about, that people are afraid to open it up to who knows what happens and, and you know, direct participation of the people. Um, I would support it. You know, I would support it could, just for what Laura just said. We could use a reinvigoration of our democracy here and a, and a great infusion of public participation and and feeling involved and feeling like it's responsive to people's concerns. That would do us a world of good. Yeah. yeah. And we've got to stop being afraid. I mean, we're, it's like we're so afraid, again, we get into that calcified stage that we can't embrace change because it's going to be worse. It might be better. I mean, there's a lot of things that could be better. The, the, the term limits, the campaign, the campaign finance reform, the you know, moving forward on being able to have agriculture, but also being able to have housing that's for, you know, local residents instead of building for an international market. You know, having a, a tourism economy that respects the, the residents' values as well and, and the need for space there. You know, how are we funding our resources and making sure that we can maintain those for future generations? I mean, there's so many issues You're that people care about dramatically. There are about. so <laughs> many possibilities that we could have. And, and it's just, I think, w whenever I talk to people about these ideas, kind of the, um, the brokers in the status quo, oh no, because you could have something terrible happen. But again, the, the lack of the initiative, the lack of the opportunity for people to bring these ideas forward, the lack of the ability for younger people or people who have, are career people like us who have something to offer to be able to break into this system is, is to our detriment. System, yeah. I can, I can, sorry. You know, we do have the lowest voter turnout in the nation, right? I mean, yeah, so that yeah. is a reflection of, of what Laura was just talking about. Yeah. People feel uh, disenfranchised, disenfranchised from our government. Yeah. I think that no matter what the specifics that might come out of any any of these processes we're talking about, I think the the, the result of having people feel re-enfranchised would, would trump any of that stuff if I may use that word. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we forgive you. Carefully. <laughs>
That's uh, Senator Russell Rudiman, uh, Rudiman, sorry, okay. and Senator uh, Laura, Laura Thielen here on Community Matters. And we're talking about voter initiative and uh, term limits. And there's more to come. We'll be right back after this break. Aloha, I'm Kawe Lucas, host of Hawaii is my mainland here on Think Tech Hawaii every Friday at 3 p.m. We address issues of importance for those of us who live here on the most isolated landmass on the planet. Please come join me Fridays at 3 p.m. Mahalo. Aloha, I'm Kili'i Akina with the Grassroot Institute of Hawaii, and one of our delights is to be partnered with Think Tech Hawaii and produce programs every week. Every Monday at 2 o'clock, we have a show called Ehana Kako, which means let's work together. So we bring people from all across the nation and the country, and certainly throughout the islands together here to talk with them about how to work together, and how to work together to do the following, to build a better economy, a better government, a better society. So if you're interested in the research of our think tank, the Grassroot Institute, or if you're interested in how that's applied at the governmental and community and business levels, you'll enjoy the fascinating conversations with our guests on Ehana Kako every week on Think Tech Hawaii at 2 o'clock on Mondays. Until our next show, I'll see you. <laughs> Aloha. Okay, we're back, we're live, we're here with Senator Russell Rudiman and Senator Laura Thielen talking about voter initiative and term limits. So important we have this conversation, it really is. And the more we talk about it, the more important it gets to me. I get excited about the possibility. So, uh, you were talking in the break uh, about just exactly how this would work. Um, and I, I forgot the point you made, but... <laughs> it was brilliant. But can you... It was yeah, brilliant. I, I forgot it too, no. Well, two things, one is, we have enacted term limits for virtually every other office in our state. Mayor, governor, council members, board members, commission members. Every other uh, position that we can enact term limits for, we have. So somewhere behind all of this, there's this idea that term limits are a good thing for everybody except us. And you know, there's, sort, there's sort of a, a logical disconnect there. It's like it's nothing but selfishness I think you know that uh, how can you justify imposing term limits on everywhere around the state and but make exceptions for ourselves and for me when we went to this conference that we were talking about it was kind of an aha moment I always wondered why we didn't have term limits and then at the conference I realized oh we're an outlier in that we don't have initiative and we don't have term limits which most states have either either have or have had and, and it's not a coincidence. We don't have term limits because we don't have initiative. Because in, in most states, term limits came about by initiative. Yeah. So that's an important we, point. They go hand in glove. Right. Exactly. One begets the other. Yeah. So we have insulated ourselves from this fundamental responsive mechanism of democracy that uh, I think you know we would benefit from changing. Yeah. My latest obsession is the um, Hamilton. Broadway play. Yes, yes. So I've been listening to the soundtrack. Expensive tickets, whoa. Oh, well, yeah. Well, the soundtrack <laughs> is a lot easier. But um, there is a great song in it where George Washington says he's going to leave office after two terms. And Hamilton's saying, no, you can't leave. And he says, you know, I have to leave because I have to teach the country how to be stronger, how to move on without me. He was and great, wasn't he? It was great. It was, and so it, it takes that argument that, oh, no, we need the legislator who, you know, understands everything and can't. But, but you also need a leadership bench that you know, has room for new leadership to come in. Yeah. And so in some ways, we, we have to leave. Yeah. Just it's a refreshing thing. Yeah. It's, like, it's, like, uh, it's better to have a draft army <laughs> than where everybody's permanent in the army because it allows that fresh air to pass through and you get the benefit of people from the outside having creative ideas and they come in and I think you mean you a volunteer their... army as opposed to a draft army. Yes, volunteer yeah, army. Okay. Well, you know, a draft army mm. permits new new blood and they come in just for the period of the draft. Oh, I see, I see. see. Well, there may be some flaws in that analogy there. <laughs> 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 you think it the legislature. You can put it on the ballot. I certainly think of. <laughs> so I, I'd like to explore with you, um, you know, how it would work um, if we had a given initiative come up under this initiative bill. Uh, so I, get, I run out and I get 35,000 signatures, and I'm going to have to work for that. 
I'm going to have to talk to everybody I know. I'm going to have to do some advertising, use social media, use email. If I had money, go on the, uh, you know, go on the, uh, television. Yeah? Um, and of course, right here, Think Tank. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I round up my 35000 Now it's on the ballot. We're only beginning because now we have to get a vote of what? A majority? How, what's, the, what's the majority? I mean, what's the number of voters I need to actually win the initiative? For normally, and again, we're open to suggestions, but normally when you're talking about just amending a law or passing a law, it would be a majority. For constitutional amendments, which we're not proposing, we tend to be more. So it's a regular statute, which would have the same power as a, a statute adopted by the legislature right. in the conventional way. And in some cases, in other states, when they adopt an initiative, it is for a, a, an idea where the legislature then has to, so it creates a law, but then the legislature has to do what's called enabling legislation. So the, the, it's basically telling the legislature, we want this law, this law is now going to be on the books, and you go next session and start to put in the details of how it, you know, that gets implemented. But you can't, you can't undo it. You know, you have to go you, through. You must, go, you must enable it. Yeah. What about a resolution? Do you think this could uh, include a resolution, like a rezo, like a legislative rezo? You know, we, we don't know exactly, like Jones Act, okay? We know the state doesn't have jurisdiction to Jones, but we want to make a public sweeping statement that we'd like a change from Congress in the Jones Act. Would a rezo be possible? That's an interesting question. Yeah. I don't think so, yeah. <laughs> because it's aimed at you know amending the Hawaii Revised Statutes. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, you could construe it that way. That's, that's a way you, you could change it. But a resolution does not have the power of law. Yeah. So yeah. it would be just uh, so. Now I have my 35000 35, I want to get that majority. I go on. I go on the air. Mm -hmm. I use every media possible. It's like an election. Mm. I, 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 I raise money. Mm. I ask all my friends. I don't know if a super PAC would be appropriate, but I could you, raise money to do that. There are non-candidate committees, and they do have reporting requirements, um, same as the candidate committees, mm -hmm. to, in order to make sure that people understand where the sources of the money are coming from for mm -hmm. that, and they have to be reported during the election period. This is what happens in California, right, I mean, on the initiative. Yeah. It's, it's, it's everywhere. Yeah, it's all over the media. And people are, you know, they're making their minds up on the basis of multiple sources of influence. But they found in other jurisdictions that it's not necessarily the most money that wins. So in a lot of these matters, the, the general public has a pretty good idea of where it falls on the issues. Mm -hmm. Well, I, why do I feel this could be very interesting for Think Tech? Because we would have this conversation on every issue that came up, and we would let people come in. We have a thing called Speaker's Corner on Saturday. People come in, and they can make any statement they want, and we broadcast that, you know, unless it's out of, out of taste. But uh, we, you know, we would, we would want to see that happen. We want to see this grassroots thing mm -hmm. where every Tom, Dick, and Harry can come in and express himself. And, um, and, and for that matter, come up with a bill. I think it would be important if we got to that point that all the uh, free, free, freely accessible media be used as much as possible because I would hate to see a situation where big money can come in and do a, a large media campaign against the public interest. I would So, so uh, media such as yourself would be incredibly important in such a situation. Yeah, grassroots kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But how do, you, how do you prevent that? Well, we do have the um, the funding that goes to Olalo, excuse me, Olalo, and then the same um, stations on the neighbor islands. We have organizations like yours, and then I think with the internet, it is the great leveler. You know, That's right. just people can get out information now free, and it's hard for the paid ads to compete with that. And again, because there, there's a lot of discussion on these issues. I mean, if you're going to talk about certain issues, people know where they're going to fall. And by having the minimum sing signature requirement, you're making sure the issues that reach the ballot are ones that have you know, strong support. F and these signatures have to be from registered voters. So it's people that are participating in the process, or at least at some point participated in the process. And yeah, and, and, and you would know, everyone would know that this is a grassroots issue. Yeah. This is not an old boy issue. This mm -hmm. is, comes from the people, so 30, 35,000 people say yeah. that we need a chance and to vote on this. Yeah. And, you know, it occurs to me when, um, if, if there's a good side and a bad side to an issue, the bad side has to spend at least 10 to 1 to win. 
And I think we've seen in Hawaii in particular some examples in the recent years where really big money did not win an election. Yeah. So um, that, that gives me a great deal of hope uh, on this issue that the people will make the right choice if given the opportunity to make the right choice. We have so many issues in the state, really, and, and so much, what do we call it, disgruntlement with people about government, the way it works, and uh, what it does or doesn't do. So do you, do you feel that this will <clears throat> create, a, change the way government works, that it will become a democratization of legislation, uh, that we can expect to see substantive changes that will you know, improve our quality of laws, our quality of our society. You're an idealist, aren't you? Well, <laughs> around you guys, <laughs> <and> I am. <laughs> well, I'd like to, th I mean, I think it would be a step in that direction. I don't think it would magically cure all of our ills, uh, but it would certainly be a step in the right direction in those regards. I think it would um, push the legislature into action in, in cases and on issues that it's refused to act. Uh, when people in the legislature say, you know, we need to have professional legislators make these decisions, but then they haven't been able to, if they see an initiative maybe make the brink of the signatures, but not quite there, they know that there's popular support to act, and, you know, woe to them that continue to say, we can, I mean, if you're going to say that as professionals we got to handle it, why haven't we resolved important agricultural lands? Why haven't we done some of those things that the vast majority of people wanted us to do 40 years ago at the last ConCon? You know, so either get off our butts and do it or let the voting public take the lead. That's a beautiful point. Yeah. Because it has an effect on the whole legislature to know this possibility exists. So um, let's take a minute or two, and that's our famous camera two right over there. And <clears throat> that's a, a young voter who knows about the initiative bill and knows about the term limits bill. And he's watched this show. And the question I put to you is, would you talk to him and tell him what he can do Her. or she can do? Thank you. <laughs> I knew you'd say that. <laughs> <coughs> what they can do to make this happen. You tell her. OK. Her. Well, there is an email that goes to every single senator and every single representative. And if you do, gosh, I think it's, is it all, all sends? sends at Hawaii at capital.hawaii.gov with a capital with an O. Okay. Sorry. So all sends at capital.hawaii.gov and all reps at capital.hawaii.gov and tell them that you support having some form of voter initiative and you support having some form of term limits for state legislators and you want to see some bills passed this session. You don't have to know the bill numbers. I think at this point, the legislature just needs to see that there is a lot of popular support for one or both of these ideas, and the, we know the ways that we can make it happen. Russell Close. I couldn't say it any better than that. Yes, let your voice be heard, and tell your elected legislators that you want uh, a more participatory democracy, and that you think term limits and initiative are among the good ideas that should be considered. How noble of both of you. Thank you so much for coming down, but also for introducing these bills. Well, thank you, Jay, for uh, wanting to talk about the, these ideas. I really, really appreciate it. it. So thank see you, you so much. Okay, good. Aloha. Thank you.